Okay, this little video I want to talk about uh, discusses the proper role of the police and the proper role of citizens in police action. So let's start out. Well, Pam, what I discovered today is that it's not the clothing that concerns police or black leaders. It's the fact that a man took the law into his own hands. Yeah, he did, and he was right to do that. Everybody has the right to self-defense, and when you are committing self-defense, that is taking the law into your own hands. And if that pisses off the cops, good. It makes me happy. If it pisses off the black leaders, I'm dancing on my freaking hood. Hundreds in New York take to the streets in what was called a million hoodie march. For Hundreds for the millions. I love it. Trayvon Martin. Well, some people have these preconceived notions uh, that if you're wearing a hoodie, it automatically associates you with something that's negative. It's not the hoodie. I sure wish that these guys would focus. It's the assault. We didn't have to look far to find this surveillance video that speaks for itself. Birmingham's NAACP president Hezekiah Jackson says music videos also often help feed into that perception of lawlessness. Although Jackson doesn't like that, here's something that concerns him even more. To the 911 tape for the neighborhood watch gentleman was told that he didn't have to pursue the young man. That's what strikes me most because at the end of the day there has to be a boundary for yes he's absolutely right there has to be a boundary and and that boundary is at the point where George felt comfortable putting his life on the line for his community so that's the boundary and we know that uh, George went way beyond the call of duty by following Trevon by keeping an eye on him and moving down that path in the dark you know, most people wouldn't get out of their car. Most people wouldn't even care. They'd see Trevon over there. It's like, he ain't going to my house. Cool. Let him go. No, I don't think so. It, I wish there were more people in the in the world like George. The neighborhood watch person. It kind of broke my heart because I've dealt with neighborhood watch groups for several years, and I know how they're supposed to run. So he's dealt with neighborhood watch groups, and he knows how they're supposed to run. And he probably would tell you that the police have no power over a neighborhood watch group. Groups are formed by the, by the commu community, like, you know, six or seven people in our community come together and say we're going to form a watch group, and we form it. And basically what that is, just a group of people. There is no, it's not, there is no documentation that says you have to follow these rules, and if you don't, you, you know, you can go to jail or you can have uh, legal issues or whatever. It's just pure baloney. You know, we have informal neighborhood watches, formal neighborhood watches. It's all the same. Maybe just me and my best friend down the street decide to monitor the movements of suspicious people. And we don't even start a neighborhood watch. It's just, it's still a neighborhood watch. It just so happens that there's only two of us, or maybe just one of us. Maybe one guy decides to drive around the neighborhood every day, all night. That's the neighborhood watch. And that is clearly a case where neighborhood watch went wrong. Sergeant? No, the neighborhood watch went right. The fact that Trevon got killed was all his fault. He should have never attacked George. Brian Allison with the Jefferson County Sheriff's Office says no matter why a person calls 911, the situation should always remain in the hands of law enforcement. She's not. She She's either just re reading off of a script or she's just ignorant. And I would say it's probably a script and the guy that wrote it's ignorant. You never have to re to depend on the police, ever. Even after you dial 911, you still have every right to defend yourself, to seek out the person that you think is committing a crime, to hold them at gunpoint, to chase them down, to shoot them if you think that they're about ready to hurt somebody. There's, I mean, your powers are almost unlimited because if you were a policeman, you have to abide by all the rules and regulations of the police department. As a, as a citizen, you don't have those rules. Your rules are basically, 
the simplest of rules. And that is, see a crime? Call the cops. See a felony? Stop it if you want. That's your right. And how dare they tell us we can't. Let's continue. It doesn't matter whether they're, they're wearing no shirt or a hoodie or a parka or flip-flops. It doesn't matter. Suspicious is suspicious. If something doesn't belong in your neighborhood, as a neighborhood watch member, your job is to observe, document, and report. Alex how can you absor observe, document, and report if you lose track of the person you're observing? That's why George was following him, to observe, to document, and report. How can you report what you can't see when Trevon moved out of his view? This is just common sense. And once it clearly understood, that's what saves lives. Your life can never be replaced. I would never take it upon, or advise someone to take it upon themselves to intervene in a situation. He would never advise anyone to take it upon themselves to intervene. Thank you, sir. That's exactly right. I don't advise it either. It's very dangerous. But that doesn't mean you don't do it. If you feel the urge to do it, go right ahead. He did, you notice that he didn't say, it's illegal to follow somebody. You notice he didn't say that? He didn't say, you can go to prison. He didn't say any of that. That's our job. Let law enforcement do what law enforcement is trained to do. And Pam, I also spoke with Sanford, a university psychologist, Stephen Chu, over the phone. And he told me when he first heard about this case, his first thought was that the neighborhood watchman uh, reacted off of those racial... racial so... You know, she's at, she calls up the guy and asks him what his first thoughts were in the case. You know, he's a psychologist in the, in the university. And, you know, if you're basing your first thoughts on what you heard in the media, then, you know, obviously they're not very informed thoughts. We probably all thought the same thing. My God, this night watchman chased down a teenager that only had Skittles and an iced tea chased him down and shot him in cold blood this is sick you know first thing i thought too this is sick and then to say he's he, he, we even have evidence that he's a racist now, all that was bull crap so whatever they whenever they say you know what somebody thought at first remember whatever they thought was based on faulty faulty information implications associated with the hoodie and he simply just reacted on emotions but of course uh, Chu says that's all speculative at this point. I'm glad that uh, Professor Chu suggested that it was all speculative at that point because it was obviously speculative. There's no doubt about it. So you know at this point we can all agree that as individuals we have police powers, we have the right to detain, we have the right to arrest. If you see a felony, you can make an arrest. If you see somebody committing a crime, you can stop it. If you see somebody hurting someone or hurting you, you can kill them. And, you know, I, I would never want to kill somebody, and God forbid I ever have to. But that's, don't take away my options. Talk to you later.